Hey guys, welcome to Lauren.Live. I am so pumped for today's episode. I have a really special guest with me. And if you are listening to the audio, you'll hear both of our voices. But if you are watching the YouTube video where you want to head over to YouTube, you'll get to see the recording. We're doing this on Zoom today, which is pretty fun to, to watch it and you know feel like it's more live and, and see both of our faces. So head over to the YouTube channel, Lauren.Live, to check this out. Um, if you'd like to see it as well as hear it. Um, so today's guest is Travis Hill, and I have been lucky enough to have two spiritual readings with him in the past, um, and I've had my husband and some of his family members have also had readings with him, and he is just so special. He is the most gentle <laughs> soul, and I was so <laughs> pumped when he uh, decided to do this recording with me today. It's going to be a special treat for myself selfishly, but also for anyone listening. Um, so I'm going to do a quick intro on Travis Hill. Um, he is known around the world as a spiritual medium who is a clear channel. He uses his abilities to communicate with spirit energies and physical human energies. Travis can provide guidance and closure, uh, transforming your life for the better. Um, he was born in Salt Lake City in Utah uh, in 1990. And at the age of nine, Travis had a near-death experience, which changed his life forever and opened up the door to a whole new world. Uh, he began to see spirits shortly after this traumatic experience. Um, since 2013, Travis has been teaching workshops to help people get in touch with their higher selves, which we'll talk about that because some people may not know what that means, and to connect to spirits using natural abilities. Um, so I'm kind of rushing through because I just want to get as much as we can <laughs> in this hour or so. But Travis, thanks for being here. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It, 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 this is awesome. So thank you. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> um, so let's just kind of start, I think before we even start, um, can you describe, because some people may, may be, you know, different paths in their spirituality and may not be um, aware or, or, you know, of certain terms. We'll be talking a lot about that today. So can you describe 100%. what is your higher self? What does that mean? Absolutely. So um, your higher self is basically like your heart um, and your soul. Um, and um, I, I want to say probably back in uh, 2017, um, maybe even a little bit 2016, uh, that's when I was learning about the higher selves. Um, and um, it actually happened, my uh, husband and I were out in Sedona, um, and I was actually in a transition period of my career. It was actually a hard time for me because um, before I started connecting to people's higher selves, I was actually connecting uh, to what was called the archangels. Um, and uh, now I don't want to say anything negative about the archangels, but I do uh, from my own personal experiences and then also uh, clients' experiences um, that they have a tendency to be a little bit more ego-based. Um, and uh, the human ego mind or the definition of ego through spirit um, is anything connected to like judgment or control. So they were very accurate through people's guidance. Um, but a lot of the energy was more judgmental. So when we went out to Sedona, um, my, it was actually my husband that had this epiphany. We were actually in Sedona um, meditating. We were, you know, seeing a shaman. I was really trying to get to that next uh, space in my life. Um, and uh, so we're just meditating. And he was like, I got it. He's like, you need to now connect to people's higher selves. Um, and so I was like, oh my goodness, like what I, I was like, I've heard of that terminology before, but exactly what is it? Um, and uh, so I didn't do any research. I just really started going from within. Um, and what I learned about the higher self is it's our innocence. Um, it's the unconditional love, the blueprint. It's um, our higher self is more connected to source energy, which source energy is everything around us. Um, including what's in the universe. Um, so when you're connecting to your higher self, it's just basically that higher wisdom of unconditional love. Um, now, people do get confused because uh, oftentimes people ask me a lot, like, how can I connect 
uh, to my own higher self. Um, and I tell people all the time, the best way to do so is just meditating. Um, but people do get confused because they're kind of expecting to see like an outsider. So like in their mind's eye, like a, a different person, I guess you would say, you know, um, and, um, and I had that mistake myself. Um, and so I learned that our higher self is actually that quiet inner voice uh, that's within our heart guiding us is always there for us anytime that we access it. Um, and uh, even if we're struggling, uh, we can even be in a place of ego, but at the same time, our higher self is always there, um, except it's going to just be a little bit more pushed away. Um, and so being able to like meditate, go within, uh, confront some of the struggles that you're having, don't judge yourself with these struggles because uh, we're human. Um, and that's the whole thing with higher selves is they know we're human, <laughs> you know, um, and it's okay to have those human moments. That's, that's part of planet earth, right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> totally. so absolutely. Okay. That's a good definition. And then again, just to kind of break it down, maybe for some people that may not be familiar with like, uh -huh. the source, for instance, like I would kind of define that as like, some people might call it God or like a Absolutely. higher being or, or, you know, even kind of what I more think is like pretty much all of consciousness is God or is the creator. Like yes. I think it's all the same. Would that kind of be fair to what source is? So um, kind of okay. um, through the higher selves, I just, I, I've learned so much uh, different concepts there. Um, in, in our uh, big universe that we live in, um, there's actually different gods and goddesses. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I've actually learned terminology does really matter uh, because when you're praying to like a specific God, um, you can actually bring in that frequency or that energy um, into your life. Um, and source energy is kind of like above and, uh, above and beyond uh, gods and goddesses. And it's actually just more considered just like life force energy. Okay. Um, and uh, I've asked the higher selves in people's readings, like, um, is it possible? Can, can you can you actually talk to Source? Mm. Um, and um, I got told through the higher selves that yes, uh, but it's actually just this um, consciousness, kind of like what you said, okay. um, just whole, like this mass consciousness yeah. of okay. you know collective information, yeah. you know. Okay. Um, and so, absolutely. Okay, I just learned something new, <laughs> and maybe you guys did. I didn't realize that. I've never heard. Well, I mean, maybe I've heard that, but I never really thought about like there's there's uh -huh. more than just one God. Like there's different gods and goddesses. Uh -huh. That's new yes. to me. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and one of the reasons to how I've actually learned this information was, um, I'll just kind of like backtrack a little bit if that's okay. Sure. Um, and, uh, so when I was connecting, um, you know, to the archangels, um, I want to say the connection of the archangel started with me, um, probably in the about, uh, 2014, um, and then I stopped connecting with them um, pretty close to 2017. Um, and uh, I, I never grew up religious by any means. Um, and I was never against religion. I did have opportunities to go to church with my high school friends. And it was fun, <laughs> you know. So um, I did no judgment there, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, however, when I was connecting to the archangels, I was actually praying a lot uh, to what people would call God mm. um, in most religions like LDS or Christianity, um, Catholic, you know, um, they kind of have like the same concept of mm. like God, basically. And um, for me as a channeler and as a medium, uh, we get to access uh, different uh, consciousness beings with different personality traits. Um, so I wasn't channeling God um, into my readings, but when I was meditating, I would actually connect, you know, with that being. Um, and I noticed that that frequency, I don't want to say it was dark or negative, but at the same time, it did have a little bit more of this. Um, I, I don't know. I, I feel bad if you're even saying this. It was just more of like an undeveloped, you know, kind of being. Um, and um, it had a little bit more of like that judgment, uh, guilt, shame, you know, it was holding on to that quite sure. a bit. Um, and uh, so that was a really hard time for me because uh, I was really stepping away uh, from the archangels. And also um, part of my career was to have this purpose of realizing that there is an unconditional love in the universe that most people don't get to know or access. And so um, when I connected to the higher selves and personally my own, 
and also other clients, they kept on saying that there's other gods and goddesses and whoever you pray to is um, going to be the information that you're going to receive. Um, but it's also going to be the frequency that you're matching. But what's important for us humans is we first have to um, have compassion. We, uh, the recipe of unconditional love is being compassionate and understanding. Um, no judgment whatsoever on that. Um, and you get to actually climb the ladder. Um, and so I've learned in, in religion um, that it's not wrong. Um, we're all on this planet and I, I kind of look at it as kind of like grade school. It's like, we get to gradually yeah. graduate, if that makes sense, totally. you know? <laughs> um, and so there's certain people that are very religious, but then, uh, I have had clients where they fell away from religion and they wanted something more, something better. They didn't want to feel like if they were, living a certain way that they were going to not end up in heaven. Um, and uh, so that was the energy that I was, you know, channeling through when I was connecting to God and the archangels. And um, of course, for me being a, a, a gay man and also a medium, it's kind of like, you know, um, I guess you would say not okay in society sometimes with certain perspectives, sure. right? Or maybe even um, in the church. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And um and so I, I wanted to find something more. I wanted to find something better. Um, so I had a spiritual guide that's always been with me ever since I was a teenager. And I, I, I believe that she was a mom in my past life. Mm. Um, I call her Angela. Um, and she kind of told me the whole scoop of like the universe. Um, and I'm in the process of writing a book right now on it. Um, and uh but she told me, she goes, there's different gods and goddesses. And she goes, the gods, uh, the gods that most religions pray to um, is not evil. Um, however, there is judgment involved. Mm. Um, and um, so she actually told me that uh, if you want to connect to unconditional love, there's a God for unconditional love, uh, which I call a uh, divine mother creator um, is what I call her. Now, there's no genders up in the spiritual realm. Um, and so there's kind of like the masculine and the feminine. Mm -hmm. um, so the way that I kind of look at uh, Divine Mother Creator is just more of like this motherly nourishing woman. Um, it's like the days that I'm struggling spiritually or even, you know, through my own personal life, I'll literally hear this audio, you know, voice in my head that's like, it's okay, sweetie, you know, like you just need to take care of yourself today, you know, um, and uh, ra rather than having that energy of like, okay, you need to step up your game, <laughs> you know, um, she she is so genuine. And, and so um, that's how I've been able to learn over the years that um, for all, all who's listening, uh, no matter where you're at on your journey, whether if you're religious and that fits you, then that's perfect. Mm -hmm. um, but those that are wanting to get to that next step of unconditional love or what's after religion, um, really, it's more about a universal, you know, frequency of unconditional love out there that does truly does exist. Wow. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. And I mean, it's interesting to talk to different people, spiritual or not, and get different perspectives because everyone has something where they're getting different messages. But for some 100%. people that have been more traditional in their religious, you know, beliefs, this is probably very new. And there's a lot, very to, new. A lot to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. And uh, yeah. it, it, it's very new. Um, and in fact, um, years ago, um, when I got told uh, through Divine Mother Creator, and then of course, you know, my higher self that um, over the years, I'm going to be spreading a new message out into the world. I will admit I was terrified because um, I don't want to go up against religion because my my message is not to judge or bash, re uh, you know, bash religion sure. um, because it's not bad. Um, but um, at the same time, there's good, uh, there's like pros and cons to everything in life. Right. Um, and, um, so for those that are just ready to experience and know and have faith and trust that, you know, there is unconditional love up in the universe and you're not going to be judged or punished by living the life that you want to live. Um, and I think that's a very important message. It is. Yeah. And I think, yeah, for me and many others that I've talked to, I think that have grown in their spirituality, 
I think that is one thing that's really hard is that judgment factor, the man-made yeah. factor. I'm not, again, not saying anything bad about mm-hmm. religion, but you know, no. just, I think there's a lot of truths in religion, like Christianity will just will focus on because it's 100%. most relevant maybe right now to many of us in this country, but there's truths, right? And maybe some of Jesus' right. messages, but I think in other religions, there's similar truths as well. And it's kind of this all encompassing thing. And there's just so much more than maybe we're taught in the Bible or at church, right? And so, like 100%. you're saying, is to kind of come full circle is like there are resources such as our higher self or spirit guides. Yeah. Or for some people, because I have had readings too with archangels as well, there are other uh-huh. places to get some guidance. Absolutely. hundred percent. And it's all like where someone's at too, you know? Um, and so, you know, um, for those that, uh, you know, channel the archangels, um, that's where they need to be, you know, um, those that uh, channel, uh, Christ consciousness, Mm -hmm. you know, that's where they need to be. Um, you know, uh, when I first started, uh, doing, uh, mediumship readings, um, I was taught to first connect to people's spiritual guides mm-hmm. um, and spiritual guides could be anyone. I mean, they yeah. could be your loved ones. They could be people that you've met in past lives, mm-hmm. um, you know, or like a guardian um, angel, I guess, in, in like human uh, terms. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and, um, but over the years, uh, when I first started off doing readings, I had uh, multiple spiritual guides. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's actually kind of funny because I had one spiritual guide by the name of Ginger. Um, and, uh, she, she was a redhead, um, and, and no offense to anyone who has red hair, but, yeah. you know, uh, she, she told me, she, she goes, um, you know, sometimes people walk over you, so you need to be a little bit more, um, you know, tougher, you know, you need to bring in that element. So as a spiritual guide, that's what she did for me. Um, and then also, you know, my other spiritual guide, Angela, she had more of like that mother nourishing energy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I also had a spiritual guide named Night Watch that was more Native American. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he helped me connect to Earth. Mm-hmm. And so there's so many different uh, beings out there, spiritual guides that can help us and assist us for so many different reasons in our life. Um, however, I've learned that over the years that the best true full spiritual guide, uh, honestly, is you. Your uh, it's your higher self. It's your heart. Totally. Um, and, I, and I think that's where sometimes people get a little bit uh, kind of lost. And I did too, because um, I loved my spiritual guides, um, but sometimes they didn't always have the best of advice, mm-hmm. if that makes any sense. Because in the spiritual plane, they're actually on their own little you know, journey and yeah. different levels as well. Uh, just like here, us humans, mm. um, they have different personalities. So whatever you match to, you know, if, if you know, wherever you're at, that's where you need to be. Mm. Um, and um, so I think it's important for the listeners to know, as I'm talking about this, um, be, be you um, and, and just really be at the level that you're at, you know, um, if you're not resonating with something, that's okay. Um, maybe just because you're at a different level doesn't mean that you've got it wrong. And that's one thing that I've also learned is that every religion does have it right. In their own <laughs> Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, totally. And like without <laughs> the man-made or the negative things, I mean, hopefully it's yep. about love and bettering yourself and evolving in some way. And there is this higher power. I mean, there's a lot of similarities. And I think that's why I've decided to kind of I just call myself spiritual. I leave it open, but totally, you know, and I joke on my show a lot. Like, I know some people don't like this woo woo stuff. Like, you know, people are hearing <laughs> about like ginger, the spirit guy. Like, what is that? But I mean, I think to to you know, just I don't know, talk about that point again. It's just like I have a lot of friends that are very like Christian, and that's just the way it is. And then I'm a little bit more yes. on the woo woo side, and. And then I have people that are yeah. all in between, and so I think, like you said, like everyone is on their own path, and it's helped me a lot yeah. as I've grown to like no one's right or wrong. And I think we all need this right now in the world. Like there's so much division and like right or wrong and judging and everyone is on their own path. And if you choose to be in a more organized religion and you need that to help motivate you in life, that's great. Absolutely. So absolutely. I think that's a good message to like reiterate. Absolutely. And, And I think that's one of the things that I've always wanted to do is like, I have to be careful with my message because I don't want anyone to ever feel like there's um, a new religion because what I what I have learned is is I truly don't consider myself religion and 
um, who I pray to, Divine Mother Creator. She even told me, she goes, you're going to write this book. And she goes, but you need to make sure that in that book, it states that this is not about a new religion. It's about a way of life. I kind of look at it as Buddhism. It's kind of like the same thing. Um, Buddha is not necessarily considered a god. It really depends on who you talk to. Um, But at the same time, Buddha is basically the staple of an idea of life, a a culture, a way of living. Um, And uh, I love the fact that, uh, you know, right now in our world, there is a lot of division and we kind of need to bring the world together, you know, and it's like, if, if someone's Christianity or LDS or Hindu or Catholic or all other religions, we can all get along because the main tip and the main goal here is every religion teaches we got to love one another. Um, that's what and, it all is, right? Love. And that's what it all is. Absolutely. hundred <laughs> percent. It's all about love. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you know, totally. and, um, and so absolutely, I think it's important for everyone to know that no matter where you're at in life, if it feels right to you, follow it. Yeah, you that's know? true. Yeah, whatever feels good for you. And I, I remember actually reading the book, A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. That was the beginning of my real like, spiritual awakening. It's a classic. Yes. If anyone has not read that, a new earth, <laughs> power of now by Eckhart Tolle is life changing. It's he breaks it down really nicely. Um, yes, he does. But I, I, I've I've yeah. read that book. Yeah, yeah. isn't it good? And <laughs> just kind of, I listened to it on audio tape too, and he kind of says, you know, if this isn't resonating with you, then it's not for you at this moment. And so, same with this. Like, if this podcast isn't resonating with you, things like this, then that's okay. But if if you're curious, then this is like a dive in moment of you know exactly. whatever feels right inside. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And and I think that I, I love the fact that you said that because I think that is important. Um, you know, because on topics such as like religion or spirituality, it, it is a very controversial, yeah. very sensitive topic. Yeah. Um and I think us mediums uh face that quite a bit. Um, you know, I I know um it's like as a medium you know that clients are going to come and they're going to be skeptic or some of them are going to be non-believers. And that's one thing that I've learned through my own higher self and divine mother creator is rather than uh, being of ego where it's like, you know, having the insecurities of like, Oh, you should believe me or you should trust me. I have to have compassion and kind of look at their shoes and go, well, I am a medium. Yeah. It, what I do is so different and so weird, um, you know, compared to your average career Right. that I have to honor that. Um, and I can't take it offensively that someone's skeptical. Um, but I have to have that gray area where I have to make sure that I'm not overly trying to prove to myself uh, that, you know, who I am and what I do is correct. Right. Um, and accurate, um, because then I get in my own way. And then that's when the ego steps in. I was going to say your ego. Um, right? <laughs> yep, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And so I go into every reading completely, just, um, just really blindsided. Uh, I don't know anything about the person, you know, when they schedule, it's like, I, I do have a scheduling system. So I do have like their first name, last name, contact info, such as email, phone number, <laughs> Um, In fact, I've actually had uh, clients get scared because I have their last name. Like you're going to Google them and then. Make a name. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And I'm okay with that. You know, Uh, the reading still works. Um, And, um, and I think that's one of the things that I've learned as a medium is um, what I do is controversial. um, And I, I feel like I need to kind of uh, just shake that out a little bit and, you know, just say, Hey, yeah, I'm aware of this, but at the same time, it's like, we're all wanting to believe in something. We, we all know, I mean, this world is beautiful. Um, how it got created. I mean, how our bodies function, how nature Amazing. functions. It's, there's a mass intelligence How there. Can you not? I always think that, like, <laughs> even aside from anything we're talking about, any religion, people that don't believe in anything, I'm, I and I say this kindly too, because maybe that's where they should be. But yes. think about everything, like down to every cell is working, or like the sun is just the perfect distance from the earth that it doesn't burn us, but it keeps us warm. Like everything seems so perfectly it's created. Balanced. How could there not be something more than what science can, you know what I mean? Explain. Like I always think that, like. Hundred percent. Just go down to the very cellular of everything, and it's like so amazing. 
Exactly. Exactly. You know, my, my husband, he loves nature. Um, you know, he, he just, uh, you know, this whole entire week, he's been outside in our backyard and, uh, he had the opportunity, uh, last summer to be a landscaper. Um, he's not working at landscaping anymore. So he's just kind of focusing on our own yard, but he is seeing nature every day. And he even just told me a couple days ago, he goes, did you know, that uh, there are these birds that uh, will, you know, eat seeds. Um, we all know that birds eat seeds. Um, and then they fly into the sky and then they drop seeds into mm. a different region. And then you have that plant mm. um, growing in a whole different, re- uh, you know, region. Um, and that's how plants, you know, blossom and grow and expand. And so when I was thinking of that, I was like, wow, (laughs) it's just like, it just blew me away. It's like simple facts, but at the same time, if you really kind of think about it, it's kind of like those birds really, truly know what they're doing. Yeah, Yeah, it's instinctive. Absolutely. That was only one example of all the mini in nature, right? Yeah, Exactly. Right. Absolutely. hundred percent. Yeah. I love that. And you know what? It's so funny. It was we were talking before, for everyone listening, we were talking before, I have some questions written down and who knows if we'll even get to any of them because I know, we're yeah. going off on, that's the thing about podcasts that are so awesome is it's just, you just start talking and you don't know where it's going to go. But now that Absolutely. you're talking about nature, I've thought about this the other day. Like I know so many spiritual people, no matter what your religion, no matter what your spiritual um, beliefs, we, so many of us find peace in nature. What do you think? Here's my theory. Like Nature mm-hmm. is at its core, it's just, it's peaceful. It's beautiful. I feel like we were born as a species outside, right? We spend all our time in these homes when really like our ancestors, right? Back in the Stone Ages, right. we're like outside all the time hunting and gathering. And that's truly, we're a mammal, right? And so absolutely, we're living in this like tech world where we're disconnected from nature a lot. And I know a lot of people oh goodness, find yes. peace from nature, but have you ever had any like signs or like readings or like, you know, guidance or anything like what, what is it about nature? Why is it such a good connecting place for so many of us? Absolutely. Um, definitely. I would love to answer yeah. that from, you know, what I've learned through, you know, readings that I've done, you know, through clients. Um, and so obviously we have mother earth. Uh, some people refer her as mother Gaia. Mm-hmm. Um, I prefer to call her mother Gaia. Um, and, um, there's different terminologies to that. And, um, but I kind of look, I I kind of look at everything has like an energy signature to it, if that makes sense. And, um, the way that higher selves describe it is kind of like an AM or FM radio. So AM has like a lower frequency. So it's a little bit harder to hear and understand. Um, FM, you know, is a higher frequency. So it's just going to be a lot more better quality. We can easily hear, you know, certain things. Um, And then of course we have, you know, today's technology where we have HD, (laughs) you know, (laughs) it just keeps expanding. Right. Um, And so I kind of look at nature, the same thing. There's different frequencies um, and there's different energy signatures. Like an example would be if you kind of look at just like an average seed, a seed is, um, every seed to every plant um, is actually built the same thing. Um, it's just made of the same organisms, the same structure, but it has a different frequency to have a different plant to it. Um, and so when I look at nature, I look at it as actually just this whole consciousness with different types of different frequencies. Um, and nature is pure um, in so many different ways. Um, and the way that I look at it is when we're outside in nature, that's our home. I mean, this is where we, you know, our ancestors didn't have these magnificent homes that we have today, you know, um, I've been uh, so much getting into naked and afraid. I don't know if you've seen that TV show or not. Um, but, uh, it's a TV show where for 21 days, Um, a man and a woman go out uh, to nature and they survive. They don't have clothes. They don't have food. They don't have water. They have to completely survive on their own. And you see them heal. You see them think um, you, you, you see them fighting against the human ego. But what's beautiful is that all the episodes I've ever seen, the couples do come together. They may have arguments. They have, they may have fights. 
but nature has a way for us to realize that in life, things are hard, things are tough. It's, it's not what we have that makes things better. It is how we go about the things in our life and the perspectives that we have that makes life better. So I think when you strip away technology, when you strip away comfort zone, you're left with our home, Mother Gaia, and it helps us to heal and it helps us to connect. Um, and so I think there's a very a beautiful energy signature to Mother Earth than you know, I can, I could don't even know how to explain I know. it. I was going to say, we could do a <laughs> you know? whole episode just on nature. <laughs> I, know, <laughs> I, mean, I know, right? Uh, but it is, it's really, it is healing. And I think I've been, that's kind of one thing that's really coming full circle for me, just with like the craziness of the world right now. And like, everyone knows like tech and like social media and like, um, you know, just like the division and the fighting with the politics and like with COVID yeah. or like anything like masks, no masks. Like they're just, everything is like, controversial and like angsty and just the energy. And it's just like, it's, I think we all scared. feel it, you know? Yeah. Oh, hundred uh, percent. So Absolutely. I think really getting back to the basics of nature and there's so many things you could do, right? Like grounding. Like if some people don't know what that is, it's literally just going out on the grass or the beach or dirt and like yes. without shoes and just putting your feet or your hands even in the soil and just yep. grounding with the earth or like going on a walk, looking at the trees, like beautiful flowers, like noticing, like just being in the moment and I think Absolutely. we could all just really, that's like the true medicine, right? Of just like being outside, breathing the air yep. and being like grateful for the birds chirping. Absolutely. Like we all need that right now more than ever. So that's just such an easy way to go out and heal and like refresh your mind. hundred yeah. percent. Absolutely. I, I love the fact that you said grounding, um, you know, because, um, you know, to kind of bring back the concept of the higher selves real fast. Yeah. Um, grounding um, is our true essence. Uh, gr uh, being grounded means being in your heart space. Um, and there's nothing more beautiful than seeing someone fall right into their heart space. Um, and when we're grounded, we're mindful of our thoughts. We're mindful of what we're saying, what we're communicating. We're mindful of the world around us and what it feels, even if it does feel uncomfortable, um, which Oftentimes people struggle with meditation because um, when if you're starting to begin meditation, you're going to start to notice that um, meditation does have a way to allow you to go within mm -hmm. and you're going to feel anxiety, the fight or flight response. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're going to feel anger, sadness. But if you simply just go within and not judge it, you know, and, and look at these emotions and say, OK, well. I'm feeling anxiety. So rather than jumping out of my meditation and, you know, go on with my day to carry on the anxiety, because it will never go away if we're running away from it. We have to go within and ask ourselves, what is bothering me? Mm -hmm. And we get to really step into our innocence. That's when we're truly connected to our higher self. So going back to being grounded, uh, the way that I look at being grounded um, is uh, definitely connecting to nature. Absolutely. But nature also does have a beautiful purity to it. Um, you know, uh, one, one of my favorite uh, quotes of a guided meditation that I love uh, by David G. I don't know if you ever heard of him, um, but he has this guided meditation. And um, he goes, uh, nature doesn't force itself, you know, to do things. So like, um, you know, trees don't, you know, just force themselves to grow they grow, right. you know, the shore doesn't force itself to hit the, you know, the water doesn't, you know, force itself to hit the shore. It just hits easily hits the shore. Mm -hmm. So when we're not grounded, we're forcing, we're, we're, we're um, then out of an alignment of our truth mm -hmm. and we're constantly in control, um, which uh, going back to ego and kind of bringing everything together in full circle, um, spirit says ego really is uh, just simply fear. That's the best way to look at it. But fear in any situation can make someone controlling. Um, you, we can either control and dictate our life. Um, and that's one of the struggles that I've actually had to work through. And it, it was actually epiphany I had um, a couple of days ago, to be honest with you. It was, I was like, oh my goodness. I was like, I've had all these expectations in my life. 
Um, and I've learned how to let go of expectations of others, but I was having so much more expectations of myself. Like I need to do this or I need to do that. And I disconnected myself from my truth. And so what uh, the pandemic and COVID did for me was help me recognize because I was forced to meditate. <laughs> yeah. I was forced to step Slow away down. from my office and, yeah. and I was forced to go within and realize what is truly bothering me. And the simple fact that I was out here trying to force things to happen without just being in the flow. Um, and so grounding, um, I, I love the fact that you said just going outside in nature, putting your feet in the grass, um, you know, smelling uh, plants. Like when I go hiking, I, I, I will purposely find like a pine tree and I'll yeah. just, I'll yeah. ask the tree, uh, can I please take a needle, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And if, if, if I, if I gently, you know, pull it and it's not coming off, then I'll be like, okay, not that one. Yeah. And then, <laughs> you know, so gentle. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <That's> <laughs> you know, I don't sweet. want to yeah. invade that. Yeah. Um, but finally when nature then offers that, you know, pine needle, I will smell it and it just brings me back to my essence. My truth. You know, yeah. we should really be grateful uh, with the planet that we have. Um, That's and amazing. therefore we should definitely take more care of it as right. what, yeah. as much as we should be taking more care of ourselves. But yeah. if we first start taking care of ourselves, then we can then take care of everything out here. Yeah, it's all connected. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Oh, I love this all. It could just keep going down tangents. But <laughs> I know. Just to I know. kind of like bring it that higher self uh, back. So, I mean, just kind of to summarize for people, because this is a lot like you can meditate and you can always connect with your higher self. It's within. Mm -hmm. dis disconnect from your ego, which that's our – a lot of the thoughts, you know, in our head and fear and, and the world and yep. just comparing yourself and, and whatever, judgment. anxieties and judgment, Absolutely. all the noise. If you can yes. move that out and just kind of connect to your true heart and, and meditate and just ask your higher self to come in or ask a guide to come in, there's really no rules, right? But just trying to right. reconnect and slow down. And I also think one thing like along with grounding and all that is just breath. Like that gets you back yes. in your alignment too. And you don't even have to sit with your eyes closed and meditate. You can have three 100%. deep breaths. That's in itself as a meditation to reset. Because when you breathe, Absolutely. you don't think about other things. That's been something that's really helped me because I struggled with fear and anxieties just like everyone does in, you know, yes, any which way, but too. just kind of breathe out that fear. Like it, visualize yep. it going out of your body and breathing in, you know, calmness. And I think even that in itself is a small meditation that might help someone just to kind of reset and get connected with your true core. Absolutely. Get that fear out because that is the lowest vibration. I've heard fear is the lowest vibration and the idea is you want to be in high vibration with yourself 100%. and source, right? So absolutely, get that fear out. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I, I love the fact that you said fear is a low vibration and, yeah. and it is a real, it is a real block. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that's one of the things I had to master as a medium was, you know, I, I've been doing readings, I want to say for 13 years now, professionally for, you know, 10. Um, and, uh, but when I first began doing readings, I was terrified. I mean, I, my, my readings have changed over the years, but when I first started out, I was just doing readings at coffee shops. So, you know, clients would come to me. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know what I was doing. It was just, I was like, I know I have an ability to offer, you know, people guidance and also closure, but I didn't know how to use it. So when I would, um, so people would actually offer uh, me an item mm -hmm. of their departed loved one. Uh, it could be a ring, it could be a necklace, um, it could be a pendant, it could be something. And I'm just reading off the energy. But when I first began, I was asking way too many questions where it would be like, now, is this your grandma? Um, is this on your dad's side? Is this so-and-so, you know? Right. Um, and for the skeptics, um, you know, and I'm not judging mediums out there that ask questions and I don't want to ever portray that way by any means, because that's how I started, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but one of the things that I've learned is trust in the information yeah. that comes forward. And there are days that I have off days, but I recognize it. Yeah. Um, yeah. and when I recognize it, I'll, I'll be honest with a client and say, I am so sorry. Like today I'm just so off. Um, I just need to reschedule. 
you know, um, and um, I think that's one thing that I've learned is fear blocks our intuition. Um, we have, all of us have our third eye. We can access it anytime. We can talk to our guides, our higher self, anyone who you feel that you deeply connect to. There's always assistance out here in the universe in the spiritual realm. But when we're constantly up here uh, and and thinking about all those random fears, um, you know, I, I've had many fears growing up. I, I love traveling, but the fears that I had growing up would be like, what if I got in a car accident or what if I rolled my car? I mean, it was pretty dramatic. And um, so I had to learn in this moment, like right now, nothing's wrong. Yeah, Like yeah. everything's perfect. Everything's fine right now. And if something is bothering me and if something is wrong, then I like what you said, Brie. Um, because I think that's super important, you know, um, obviously we all know when we breathe, it brings oxygen through our brain, um, and it allows our access of our brain to expand even wider, you know? Um, so I love the fact that you said breathing techniques. So if anyone's struggling with meditation, just start with breathing, (laughs) you know, that's the best way to do it. (laughs) You know, you hope this helps other people. Like, obviously, you and I are talking and we're connecting on it. So there's obviously other people. And I know everyone has some fear of some sort at any time in their life. So I think that's important to, like, what you said. That really helped me. And that was actually to reference the Eckhart Tolle, why it helped me so much as I was having these anxieties. And I wasn't sure where I was supposed to be in my life. And I just broken up with a boyfriend. This was a long time ago, you know, maybe 15, 15 years ago and 10 years ago. And I was really struggling. And I read that book. And it really helped me because fear is a lot about the future. What's right. going to happen in the future? But things were not there. 100%. Yeah, you know, being in the now, of course, as we all know, we've probably heard yeah. is is so important because this is all we truly have. All we really have guaranteed is right now, and Absolutely. so I that helps me a lot. Of like illusion is this like falsity that something's happening. But if you can bring yourself into the now, well, that yep. thing isn't happening. So why am I worrying about it? Yeah, you know what exactly. I mean. And a lot of things we worry about never come true. So it's such a waste of space up here. Absolutely. So absolutely, reminding people to be in the now and to breathe. Just be in the moment. And anything that you have, everything that you need is within you. I think that's 100%. also one falsity that, not to be negative, but like a lot of religions or certain teachings or churches will teach you <clears throat> like you have to go outward to get something. But I truly yes. believe everything that we need is within. And it's in here. We are absolutely. part of source, in my opinion. And so, yes, it's not that we're correct. better than God or source, but it is within us. And so, if you can access yep. that, that's like truly all you need. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. Be part of this whole great awakening that you hear a lot of people talking about is everything <laughs> yes. you've been programmed to think, but really it's all here. Yes, so exactly. That's all the of, information yeah. is up here. Absolutely. And, um, you know, that's one of the things that I had to work on and I am still working on it too. Um, it, but I think it's so normal for us humans. Like if I'm having a bad day, you know, of course there's that human side of me. That's like, I need comfort food. I, I need <laughs> this. I need that, yeah. you know, um, especially during, you know, the COVID. I mean, my goodness, I, 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 I'm still vegetarian. I would, I don't consider myself vegan. Um, but, uh, for the fact that I still eat eggs, um, but I was very strict on myself, like, you know, two years ago before the pandemic hit and, Um, so when the pandemic hit, I was like, I'm going to eat cheese, (laughs) you know, and, um, (laughs) right. Right. And, um, but I would, uh, I would feel guilty. I would judge myself. I I would feel bad. Um, and it's just cheese. Like for me, it's like, it was like a big deal. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it was because I started, you know, being a little bit upset with myself on, you know, my diet. Um, so there was fear of the future. There was fear of like, well, am I going to get addicted or I need this or I need that? So finally, I just told myself all that I need is to really come back here, Mm -hmm. you know, because that cheese is yummy, but it's not going to get rid of the stress, you know, um, it may even add more stress. Um, and, but I think a lot of it too, is the compassion of self. Um, there's that gray area. And that's one thing I've learned is that 
absolutely challenge yourself, like better your life, um, have more trust, have more faith, go within. But if you slip up, that's okay. You know, human. It, yeah, we're human, you know, and I think that's super important because um, I think whether if it's religion or spirituality or, or even non-believers, um, I think all of us humans are just extremely hard on ourselves, you know, and uh, we, we are human. We, we, part of humanity is making mistakes, but um, I always look at, um, you talked about the uh, great awakening that's happening right now here on this planet. And it's huge. Uh, we, I think everyone's seeing it. Politics. Yep. I mean, there's talk about our money system changing. Um, there, there is a lot of talk about so many different things changing. And, uh, but if we look back in history, history was pretty dark, you know, um, it, for me as a medium, I would, I, not to be negative, but how history was back in the day, I would not be alive if I still live, <laughs> you know, in that time frame. I would be considered a witch. Yeah, um, that's true. How we, yeah, how we've evolved is amazing. And that evolution is continuing moving forward. Um, and the next step of evolution is unconditional love. Um, but it has to first start with self, you know. Yeah. And so absolutely. Oh, so many things that I want to talk about. Like well, I know, right? Yeah, like, <laughs> We're having fun. Well, it's interesting. This is, comes at such a good time, at least for me. I'm having fun. I hope other people listening are. But like if it's resonating with me, it's, I'm sure somebody else, there's millions of people and hopefully thousands of millions will listen to this at some point when it's on the internet. But absolutely, you know, two things that you said of like the evolving. So I was one of my questions was we can kind of uh -huh. touch on that after this, after my point, hopefully. But you know, we live in such a chaotic, crazy world. But then I think to myself, well, history has had a lot of hard times too. So in yes. some ways, this isn't different. It's just we live in a with social media and internet, and there's some things that might amplify it. Absolutely. Um, but think of also just to be positive amongst the negativity. We've evolved so much too. So with some of our setbacks, you know, there's a lot that yeah. we've, you know, grown in. So I was actually talking we to a friend. Grown quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. I was I talking to a friend about this the other day um, on Marco Polo. It's an app. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. You can leave little recordings and they record back. And Oh, um, how cool. If my friend's listening, she'll know. But uh, <laughs> we had a, a really <laughs> deep conversation and I, I said, you know, think about, I'm just so excited because she, she's a little more Christian by the book, but she's also, I've seen her open up so much. We talked about that on this thread that we were talking mm -hmm. and she's opened up so much and I've loved seeing that journey and I know Absolutely. she's seen me change a lot. And I said, you know, I'm just so excited to be talking to you about this and other people because think about this. Some people still think this is all woo woo, but there's a lot of people that are talking about great awakening, meditating, chakras, healing, like yeah. All the yep, stuff that yoga. we're talking about, right? <laughs> Higher selves, yoga, and karma, and all this stuff. And like you said, you may not be alive. If we were to be talking about chakra healings and yoga and going to like Reiki energy healers and all the stuff that we do now, a lot of people, they would have thought yep. we were like lunatic witches. And right, so right. Not in itself, just, you know, whatever that maybe 50s and 60s, that yep. would have been like crazy. And so just to see Absolutely. the evolution and spirituality, it's so incredible. It is really incredible, yeah. you know, and I think, you know, as you know, we focus on, you know, being positive, it's really about, we are doing it, you know, yeah. we, you know, some people say the world is much darker. Mm -hmm. And um, I have to remind myself, I'm like, well, what did I learn in history school when I was in middle school and high school? And I'm like, I was it was like a scary movie I was reading in those textbooks. I, I, it, for me, I, I was just like the way that I look at our life. Yeah. We still have our judgments. We still have things that we need to work through and evolve with as humans, but we are doing amazing, yeah. you know, um, and we're getting there. Um, and, uh, you know, I have to add to though, it's kind of the irony here in a, in a sense, because um, let's, let's just use uh, indigenous tribes, you know, for an example. So like, obviously, before we came here to America, there was Native Americans. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, Native Americans had their battles, they had their yeah. fights, you know, some of their tribes did not really connect very well with the other tribes. But they were spiritually connected. Yes. Um, uh, and Mother they did Earth. talk to plants. Yes. Absolutely. They did sweat lodges where they connected to spirit. Yes. 
So uh, I feel like it's a lot of the, um, I don't know if it's the Westerners, I'm not sure the proper terminology, but I feel like there was a time, you know, frame where there was a part of our civilization that was trying to somehow disconnect us, you know, from nature, from spirit, from truth, from a higher power. And, um, and so, you know, back in the day, it's like this stuff, like yoga, like you said, like yoga, Reiki, meditation, all of it would be considered witchy. Yeah. But nowadays it's normal, you know, um, everyone uh, knows what yoga is. Right. Most people know what Reiki is. Some of them may have not tried it, but they know what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, they've heard of at least of it. Um, but the fact that all these tools are here in our lifetime right now, all of it is about helping us to be more mindful, yeah. um, helping us to slow down more conscious. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Would you kind of say and, in yeah. a nutshell, like that's part of what we're here to do and evolve is become more conscious? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. You know, one thing I've learned with the higher selves, cause I've had many clients ask me, um, uh, they say weird questions, but I don't look at anything weird <laughs> anymore yeah. Yeah. nowadays. Um, and, uh, if I use the terminology weird, I look at it as like a compliment yeah. or like a positive, you know? Sure. Um, and, uh, but I've had many uh, clients ask me like, what is the point of us humans mm-hmm. on this planet? Um, and, um, higher selves describe us, um, you know, and I, I, I want, of course, to, you know, uh, honor, you know, people's different, you know, beliefs and faith. Cause I don't, of course, want to come across as like, this is the way, cause really every way is the correct right. way. Um, and so whether if you want, I, I call it divine mother creator and source, some people may call it God. Um, I believe that they're different, but, you know, going back to what we were talking about, um, you know, when we're connecting to our essence, when we're connecting to our truth, um, and the evolution of humanity, when we first began as a spirit, so there's a difference between a spirit and a higher self. So the spirit's kind of like our consciousness. So it's kind of like everything that we're aware of and also our subconscious, you know, back here. But our higher self is kind of somewhat up here. It's, it's, a, it's an energy essence that is still connected to us uh, from a higher plane, from a different dimension, I guess you would say. Um, so when we're first born, like say for an example, if you're a spirit and you want to experience the first time here on this planet, Travis, you sorry, may not, sorry to interrupt you. Do you happen to have music playing? I, I do. I do. Should I turn it down? Do mind? Sorry. I think just this particular song is coming in. <laughs> I, I think it is. I think you're right. Okay. Let me okay, real quick you. turn it down. No One worries. moment. No. Sorry about no, that. No worries. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I, I wondered maybe, maybe that's why I felt like I was going, I was drifting off because I, I was losing a sense of like topic. Oh, I was yeah, like, no, what am okay. I talking no. about? Like, I'm losing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, no, that's okay. I was like, I'm going on a tangent. Yeah. And I don't know why. No, that's okay. Um, and uh, <laughs> no worries. Um, but anyways, um, excuse me. Um, basically, what I was saying is. Um, so, so say for an example, if there's like somebody who, uh, you know, got to be on this planet for the very first time, they've never had past lives. Um, they're going to really struggle a little bit more. They're, they're, they're going to not know, um, they're, they're going to feel emotion, Mm -hmm. but they're not going to understand exactly what it is. Um, so they can get angry at someone. And maybe for an example, someone will say, you know, wow, like, why are you angry? They're not going to understand what that means. They're not going to understand how to control it. Um, And so as we evolve, basically the whole concept of here of this planet is for our spirit um, and our higher self to really gather all this beautiful information so we can actually take that information into our heaven. Um, because uh, how, I, how I've how i been described heaven being through higher selves is actually not a, a place, but it's actually a frequency. Um, and so there's a concept of like, you know, heaven could be here on earth. And it basically is. It's just accessing a different frequency. Yeah. So I kind of feel like as a medium, that's basically, you know, what I'm doing is accessing you know, that energy that's already around, uh, around us. But, um, when we're disconnected from our truth and we're going to have a hard time connecting to that, 
Um, and so basically humanity is here so we can touch, so we can feel taste. The physical, like experience. Oh, physical, mm-hmm. yep, absolutely. And every life that we live, we go through experiences, good and bad. And we take all of that and we can apply it to the evolution, to our next world, to our next step. So I kind of look at us as like these little spirit babies, <laughs> I guess you would say, in a physical body. Yeah. Um, and we're learning um, how to live. We're learning how to feel sense, like like you said, the physical. But then we can then take that and we can then turn that into our heaven, wherever yeah. we're at you know, from there. Yeah. And so that's how, so, so that's how it, I've kind of been described of how and why we're here on this planet. Right. And, I, and I've heard that too from other sources and spiritual like mm-hmm. resources that I follow. Like this is almost kind of like a school, like you had said earlier about graduating is yes. like you come uh-huh. here to learn. It's the earth school. And yes. And I've heard from several, again, different sources that, um, people that have psychic abilities or get, you know, frequencies from angels or spirit guides that we come here for this physical, physical experience and like souls are lining up to be here. And it's such a gift to be here because it's such a unique experience. And I know not everyone believes in like ETs. And that was actually one of my questions that could, again, oh, yes. I could dive, we could do another show on that, but just if you, <laughs> yeah. if you do believe in that. And I do that there, are, there is life on other planets and other realms and stuff, but um, Absolutely, it is such a gift to be here. Earth is such a unique experience, and to come into a physical body, and I think even you know people that may be Christian or from other religions too would would agree. Like we have a spirit, and it's in a physical body, and when we die, the body is just the vessel, and that correct can decompose into the earth, and it's just this thing that we are here to experience. And but then the soul would go on to either heaven or whatever you believe. And so there are similarities again amongst, amongst Absolutely. different religions, but just to kind of summarize of it, it is such a gift to be here and other planets even I've heard in other, cause I've had readings from uh, different mediums that have said, you know, a lot of other p- planets and ETs are looking at earth, watching us. It's so fascinating to see us one, how yep. we live and experiment and create things and um, inventions, but also this awakening that's happening. And I kind of wanted to touch on that. We are living yep. in one of the most historical universal times of a whole planet shifting. And I know a lot of people may not know what that is, so feel free to do some research on the Great Awakening, and you'll do a dive into Pandora's box. But <laughs> yes, you'll you will. hear that a lot of the Great Awakening, and I think that's truly what our planet is going through. And I kind of wanted to ask you. Uh-huh. This is a nice segue of like all this crazy stuff that's happening. Like, yes, it's happened in the past, but of course, this is our reality, and it feels like it's never been crazier. And so, like. I kind of think this is happening for a reason. Like I think things are getting stirred up and then we Mm -hmm. will grow and heal from it. Do you, how, what, what's some positivity that you can give to people like a feeling like, Ooh, this is such a dark time. Mm -hmm. What could come out of this? Like, why do you think this is happening for humanity? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's giving us a chance to choose. Um, And the way that I look at it is we can either choose um, ego, which uh, under ego is the category of hate, mm-hmm. judgment, crime. Uh, e- it could be evil uh, as well. Uh, fear. Um, anything that would be a lower frequency, which is negative, um, would be more considered, you know, ego there. Or we can choose love. And we're having a choice right now. And I think that's one of the things that is more clearer than ever, like as far as media goes, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, have known that, of course, you know, we have a hard time trusting, you know, the media because, you know, of course, absolutely. They can always take things out or edit it or put things together. Like it makes sense. Um, But for the most part, um, rather than being controlled about what others others say we need to believe or what we need to see, mm-hmm. go out there. Because my experiences, um, like even going to the grocery store or drive throughs um, during the pandemic, I've had some really good interactions yeah. with people. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't go through uh, horrific, horrible things. Now, I have heard, though, from clients and other people and friends and family that they've also had the negative. They have seen people at the stores fight with each other over a mask or over toilet paper, (laughs) you know? (laughs) And uh, so I'm not saying it doesn't exist. And 
It does. Um, but the way that I look at it is what are you going to see? Yeah. Are you uh, like our, our reality and our perspectives, the way that we live life is what we put more faith into. So if we're feeling negative and if we're listening to the media and the world is so dark and gloomy, then that's what you're going to see um, because that's what you're attracting. That's what you're bringing into your life. It's law of attraction. But if you're seeing positive and you're seeing love and you're choosing love for yourself, then that's what you're going to see too. Um, and so um, going back to the extraterrestrials and, and the aliens there, um, there's good and bad, you know, I, I've learned both, but, you know, just like here on planet earth, there's, you know, good humans, there's bad humans. Uh, the way that higher selves would normally speak was um, in the sense that people aren't bad. They're just choosing a different way, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and I love that because it really takes the equation out of everything. You know, um, I look at it as ego or unconditional love, not evil, uh, not evil or light. Um, and um, so with aliens, I think there's good and bad. So with the positive aliens, uh, there's a lot of different types of aliens, uh, you know, called Pleiadians, yeah. um, Arterian, Syrian, um, they're supposed to be here on this planet to help us evolve as humans. And I kind of look at them um, watching down on planet Earth on the edge of their seat, <laughs> you know, um, kind of like what's going on, you know. Um, and some people have mentioned um, and, uh, you know, there, there's been like UFO sightings and all of that for many, many, many years. But a lot of people have mentioned that even the military has says it's really stepped up. Yeah. Well, even now, um, sorry to interrupt you, but just to bring in some reality for people that not reality, but like a realistic viewpoint for people that yes. might be like aliens, even the Pentagon. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Even the Pentagon <laughs> has now admitted that their UFOs are real and it's a thing. And so, I mean, right. a lot of us have thoughts of like, duh, like this has been going on and there's ETs like walking on this earth, which by the way, if there is planet on the other universe uh, in the universe we're probably aliens to them by the way why are we normal and they're not but that's another show but um <laughs> yeah, even right. just to have the pentagon now admitting yep. there are ufos and um our government yep. has a lot of stuff i think tucked away that's going to continue to come out as we awaken 100%. so just yes. to give some people even if you're not believing in different beings and stuff being here um that that is something that is becoming more relevant absolutely yeah, hundred so, percent, absolutely. Yeah. And um, I, I love the fact that you're you're talking, um, you know, about, um, you know, for those that either believe or don't believe, because I think that's important, you yeah. know, um, to have like that both perspectives, yeah. um, because that's one thing I've just learned through connection of spirit is everyone has a right uh, to have their own perspective. Yeah, of um, and, um, but, uh, you know, from my perspective and from what I've learned through spirit, um, I have learned uh, kind of like what you're saying with the, you know, Pentagon coming out with this information. Um, I've learned that there's going to be a lot more stuff that we're oh, going to see, yes, <laughs> you know, and I'm kind of excited for oh, it, yeah. but I'll be honest. There's that human side of me. That's like, I even talked to my yeah. husband where I'm like, what would you do if you just saw all these UFOs like come into the Salt Lake city Valley? And, um, he, and I, I would be like, okay, I think I'm going to go into the bunker. Well, <laughs> you, <scary>. know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, there um, are theories, right. That people like the government or, or aliens haven't come forward enough besides the UFO sighting haven't come here correct. in the physical is because we would as a, a as humanity collectively we would freak out we start yes. shooting we wouldn't know how to receive it and so we I think it. that is one theory of why ETs kind of stay absolutely stay back um absolutely but they don't want to and, and, and they're, they, they kind of look at planet earth as like a library. Um, there's, uh, there's a video I was watching on Pleiadians. It's one of my favorite videos uh, that I've seen on YouTube and it's, I've seen it for years. Um, and um, on that video, they talk about how um, planet earth is a library of information. Um, but the way that I kind of look at it, that, that is very true. I mean, 
I've, well, of course, we've never been to other planets. I mean, you know, some, some, or you know, have, now, we, have we not? Been or there. have we? Yeah, right. Right. There's like <laughs> You're right on that. Uh, you know, Elon Musk, you know, is arranging for yeah. people to start going to Mars. Well, maybe that's already happened. <laughs> Yeah. It, and who knows, know. you know, you're totally right. It's yeah. like, we, we, we could have already lived on Mars once before. And right. Now we're here. I mean, we don't know. Right. Um, and, um, but earth is a library filled with uh, information, DNA. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the aliens of course, um, want to keep us safe and protected. So if they did create this mass, you know, dramatic scene, kind of like in a Hollywood movie, like they're here, we would panic. We, yeah. we, you know, we live in America. I mean, most of us who's listening, you know, could be living in America. And we all know that, you know, we have guns, like, we, <laughs> like what you said, like we would yeah. freak out, yeah. totally. <laughs> you know, scary. I mean, I would love and to see so, one and I think it would just, you know, you're, it'd freak you out yeah, a little bit, but absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. hundred oh, percent. Wow. So, so do you think, um, just for people again, like, you know, everyone's, wants like perspective, but do you think there are ETs good and bad walking on earth with us in this physical realm? I do. Because I've heard that from, uh, actually just to give another reference to of like, maybe we're the two crazies on here, but at least we'll be together. Right. In our craziness. Right. (laughs) I had another medium who she said she thinks she is from the Pleiadian cluster, Mm -hmm. uh, stars and planets. And she's here to help people. She has high, high psychic abilities. I mean, it's incredible. Um, She was telling me things about my life that, like, I never told her how'd she know, and um, yep. and she's very advanced. You can just see it when you look into her eyes; it's incredible. But she Absolutely. she said that she's seen them here, and I I don't want to get too deep because I think there's a lot of people that may not know about this stuff. But if you are listening, yes. you know about this stuff. Um, there are apparently like benevolent, like good ETs here yes. and in other planets watching, and then also bad ones. And some people have heard of like reptilians and some of that's obviously conspiracy theory, but yes. she did say, just, you know, take it with a grain of salt yes. that she did see a person at a conference actually go into a reptilian, yes. um, like suit. But like, if I was yes. there, I would never have noticed that, but she can see it, that frequency. She can see it through. Yeah, absolutely. So have you gotten any like, um, guides that have like shown you that, or have you ever like gotten any information of like, yes, there are good and bad ETs actually here on earth? Absolutely. I'm, I'm kind of glad that you're bringing this up because, um, that, that medium that you're referencing to, she kind of reminds me of myself and my reality and my experiences. Um, so I definitely consider myself Pleiadian. I'm obviously very human, you know, um, but to kind of help people see that perspective in a different light there, um, if we kind of think of our spirit, um, we could be living on different planets in different lifetimes. Um, and so I feel that my origins, my spirit, my higher self came from the Pleiades. And um, I do feel like uh, the Pleiadians are here on the ship, you know, to make a change. Um, and I have dealt with reptilians um, and, uh, you know, and, and of course, you know, uh, you know, as I'm thinking of, you know, talking about this, I know that they're skeptics. So, of right. course, I want to honor that. Um, so, absolutely. If you're not ready for uh, it. I'm not <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, um, and uh <laughs> Um, but uh, from what I've learned through higher selves, and there's been many readings that I've done where I have told someone that they're Pleiadian and they really connect to it. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to kind of help someone, um, you know, help a couple of people. Um, I don't know if this is accurate, um, but I was reading an article and also watching a documentary on ancient aliens. And uh, for an example, uh, Joseph Smith. Mm-hmm. Um, was talking to a Pleiadian angel. Um, and so they say the angel on top of the temples is Pleiadian. That's a Pleiadian angel. So to kind of help people understand that in it's history, actually in religion too. Yeah. Huh? In history. You can yeah. Re- yeah. Oh yeah. It's in ancient texts. Like yeah. this is not, you know, new information. This is old information, totally. but it's coming out now. Yeah. Um, but they say that the reptilians, um, so us humans, uh, they call, you know, they call humans, uh, humanoids, I guess you would say, um, we're first here on this planet. Um, and they say that the reptilians have taken control. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the way that I look at it is the human ego. So they can actually say that uh, reptilians manipulated, changed our DNA. Yeah, I've heard that. Um, yeah. Yep. And We're going down um, the conspiracy theory. I like to joke about it because if people I mean, totally, at, absolutely, at the end of the day, like you, we don't you really have know. To. But I, I've heard this from again many sources that have been right about <laughs> other yeah. things. So hear yeah. us out in 10, 15 years if this comes out. Remember this podcast. <laughs> Yes, right. Yeah, remember it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, to kind of sum everything up, um, I absolutely do believe in that. Um, and, um, you know, not a lot of people may, but, you know, that's okay. Um, I, I I was talking to my husband the other day, because I, I was like, if we're being honest and real and humble, us humans, we really don't know a whole lot. Um, there's still so much for us to know. And um, I was watching a documentary how there's actually these plants um, in the ocean, or I, was it? No, it's corn. Sorry, there was actually these corn plants, um, and there's these satellites, and they caught this red kind of um, cloud. I guess you would say over these corn plants, right? And um, they couldn't see it in their naked eye. So, you know, the Weather Channel thought it was an actual storm that was humongous. Um, but it was actually these corn plants producing this energy, um, you know, through the sun, you know. And we can't see it with our naked eye, but the satellites picked it up. So imagine like our satellites picking up things that we can't see. Totally. So we totally. really need to like ask ourselves, like, what do we really know? You know, and that's a good example, actually. Yeah, yeah, and, you absolutely. Know, like when I've had readings, and I know it doesn't make me special, it's just again my experience to try mm -hmm. to help people that may have never seen this or that have. And okay, it all kind of comes down to these it's, it's frequencies and energies, energy. and you could even say that's kind of what we are or God or without the flesh, right? And so, yes, when right. I've done chakra readings and, and different things, I, I see colors of purple and green sometimes. and my husband can see blue and, and it's funny because, you know, that's just me being open spiritually. I'm seeing that when I meditate. And then I had a girlfriend that's like very by the book, Bible, the only way, no ETs, like super opposite of everything I think of. And yeah. she says when she prays, she sees those colors. And I oh, thought wow. that was a really cool way to kind of, for anyone listening, like no matter what you believe, if she's seeing the colors and I'm seeing the colors and we're in yeah. a spiritual, like praying or meditative state, shouldn't that tell you? It doesn't even matter. Like it's all the same. It's all a spirit. It's all yeah. frequencies and energies. And I just thought that yes. was so cool to kind of like, it doesn't matter really what that. you believe it's available and it's out there. And we, we can't, we have no idea. Like there's so many frequencies and like, you can obviously tap 100%. into a lot more frequencies. It doesn't mean you're a better person. It just means you may be more advanced in certain areas spiritually, like then me, I can't yeah. necessarily like see other people's spirit, you know, spirit guides or ancestors yeah. come forth, but we all have the ability within. And so 100%. I guess just for people that are listening to some of the stuff, I wasn't planning to necessarily go down the depth rabbit hole with the ETs, <laughs> but we did. And if people think that yeah. we and I are crazy, well, welcome to the show. But, you know, but I you think, know, I don't know. I just yeah. think really quickly, sorry, and then I'll let you, you talk is just the ET oh, thing. Okay. Like I get so excited because how do we know for one, everyone says they don't yeah. exist. Well, at the same time, what says they don't? do or don't exist is, you know what I mean? Like you can't prove totally. it in some way either way. But I did hear from the medium that says she sees them as there are more good here and to not fear the bad ones because the love and light is always more powerful. And so, yep. I don't know. I just I think love that. that's something to focus on is like, don't focus so much on the negative ones, but Correct. Um, I do think they are amongst us and yes. play a part in the spiritual thing. And like you said, and my last little thing is I was doing some research when I started learning about aliens and different things. And people are like, you're crazy. But then I started going back into history and doing research. And like you had said in history, in religion, blue avians have been said to be a, a positive ET that are around that actually really want the best or trying to help us right now. And right. avian bird and in the pictures of angels, you, why do angels in pictures have wings like yeah, birds with feathers and they were blue feathers on the pictures of angels and like biblical paintings. Right. I thought to myself, yeah. blue avian ET, feathers, bird, wings, like it's all correlated if you do the research. 
Yeah. And I never knew that like spirituality and angels and ETs in a sense could be the angels that we think and talk about. That to me Absolutely. Like, blew my mind. Absolutely. You know, you're, you're right on that. I mean, I've never gotten uh, told um, that they are. I've never asked yeah. or no one's ever asked, but I've wondered, yeah. you know, I, be, I haven't even asked myself, but I've wondered, I was like, well, are these angels that we see, like, you know, even the archangels, for an example, I even was wondering, you know, are they, you know, extraterrestrials, right. you know, are, I mean, we never know, right. you know, and so, um, but uh, it kind of makes me laugh because uh, I know that we weren't, you know, expecting to go through Just the deep. rabbit hole today. <laughs> um, but uh, that's my life, oh my gosh, <laughs> you <too>. know, yeah. <laughs> you know, but I think as a medium, it's like, um, I'm not saying every medium goes down the rabbit hole, but, um, you know, I, I think when you're talking about spirits, when you're talking about energy frequencies, um, it just keeps on going, you know, and everything is energy. Um, you know, um, a, a lot of the materials in our earth, uh, they say is actually made up of the same materials. Yeah. Um, but yet it, it feels different to us. It looks different. Um, you know, foods taste different, but yet it can still be made with the same material. Um, so all of it's really perception. So sometimes I've wondered, if we weren't so limited as humans, uh, we've been conditioned and programmed. And that's one thing that higher selves really focus on in people's readings is um, we're constantly conditioned and programmed to think, to feel a certain way, to act a certain way. Um, and that shapes our reality. But what if we knocked down those barriers? What if we knocked down those walls? what could we perceive? What could we see when I mean, we yeah. use a very small portion of our brain? Yeah, that's true. So it's like, if we expand that somehow, could we actually find the truth of some of the questions that we have? Yeah. Um, and I'm, and I'm kind of speaking of a sense of those that are more science-based, you know, for me as a medium, it's like I receive information and I know it to be true. But my truth is not always someone else's truth, and that's okay. You know, we have to learn that everyone has their own beliefs and their truths. Um, but if we were to advance ourselves as humans um, more, what could we see that we just did not know it was actually yeah, there? That's true. And everyone has their own visions that come to them and their own meditations. And mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just like you said, I think, I, and this is part of the Great Awakening is, you right. know, tapping more into our intuition. We're not taught in school to, to, to what about, what is the intuition or pineal gland? You know, I've talked about right. in one of my product review videos, I talked about fluoride and that's again, some would call it a conspiracy, but I've heard from again, many sources spiritual that fluoride can calcify our pineal gland. I think some people yes. have heard that before, but regardless, it doesn't even matter. It's just, we are so taught to think a certain way here. And mm -hmm. if you just go within and trust your instinct, that's why we have intuition. And that goes very deep into spirituality of like, we should be taught more to meditate in schools and, and oh, yeah. trust our gut and all these different things. Think how differently humanity would, would absolutely function if we didn't just hundred percent do what school told us, what the media tells us you have to question. And I think that's part of this divide we have. If you question the norm, you're considered conspiracy yep. theorists now, and then if yep. you go along with it. You know, people call you a sheep, which isn't nice either way. And so mm -hmm. yeah, kind of just, being open and I don't know, yeah. I think that's part of the awakening is us coming absolutely. out of this conditioning. hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, many readings that I've done, you know, higher selves tell people all the time. I mean, this is the day and age where a lot of truth is coming out. Yeah. Um, hard, and you know? um, it's the information age, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I kind of look at that in so many different perspectives. Like it could be the information age because of the World Wide web. Um, but at the same time, it could also be research evidence. I mean, you know, we're living in a really cool times right now. Yeah. Like Elon Musk is, you know, yeah. wanting to research so much more of the space than we've ever had totally. before. It's amazing. 
Um, even, even, you know, you know, people may not think about this, but I was talking to my husband on the walk the other day. I don't think it's a mm-hmm. coincidence that he's called his car Tesla, which is named after Nikola Tesla. And if you know anything about him, he was yeah. one of the most brilliant humans of our time. And he, a lot of his uh, stuff was hidden and brushed away by the government on purpose, by the way, there's right. with free energy that's coming out, like uh-huh. an electric car. That's not something that's actually new. We think it's new, but uh, yep. along again with ETs, like this is like, I'm thinking like Star Wars is more, I used to think of it as this nerdy, like sci-fi, but it might, actually, it might be more of our yeah. reality than we realize. But free right. energy is something that's existed for a long time and it's just coming out now. But you have to think about, yeah, you could call this stuff woo-woo, but again, when you go in like Tesla's technology and why did he name it after Nikola Tesla? And you kind of start going down the rabbit hole. Yep. There's a lot Absolutely. of coincidences. And I think certain people like Nikola Tesla were banned in a lot of areas of life because they had information that would change the world. If you think about we had, if we have free energy, there'd be no need for the big oil industry and then our whole world economy tanks. Right. So there's reasons for these woo woo -woo beliefs, if you will. Absolutely. I think things are coming out and it's really exciting to see it happen. It is. It is. It's, it's exciting to see everything unfold, you know, and, and, you know, true. Absolutely. It is a lot to take in, you know, it's, you know, in a good way, it's like the way that I look at it is the life that I lived. Um, so I'm 30 now, but, um, let's even say when I was a teenager, when I was in high school, it was like, for me, life just was so simple. It was just, you know, friends and there wasn't a lot going on. It was like my perception of world was just so minimum as I got older because of this shift. Um, and I want to say for me, it started in uh, 2012 when for me personally, when my spiritual awakening started becoming even more intense and all this truth coming out. And, you know, I was even predicting certain things through people's readings of certain things that were going to occur and happen and they started happening. And I, and it was just like, oh my goodness, I, it, it was just hard for me because it was in a sense, like, because as a medium, you're receiving information and you have to trust what right. you're bringing out, right? But the, of course, I'm a human. So there's a part of the back of my mind that's like, is that real? Right. And then when it comes to truth and light, it's like, oh, but then it helps me like, oh, I need to trust myself more, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, you know definitely and i think if anything i hope this helps people that might be diving in like i i've been doing for the last couple of years diving deep into you call them what you want conspiracies yeah. red pilling it doesn't matter that's all human jargon that becomes divisive yeah. but into my own truths my own discoveries this great awakening and and it's I've been really hard and i think maybe you've experienced this too like it's really hard when you're not like in the norm yeah. You know, and people look at you like you're crazy, but then like things will come out, you know, in a few years yeah. and then I was kind of like, well, I, ego, I told you so, but I'm Absolutely. not saying everything that I think is true. It's just a lot of people might be feeling resonating with some of the stuff we're talking about and just knowing like you're not alone. Yeah. And again, nothing is right or wrong. Like we're all here perceiving things differently and having our own experience, but I don't know, just like want people to not feel judged or alone. And I think if anything, That's we just want to be more loving and we're all growing here together and there's a lot coming out in this human realm and it's overwhelming. And so just to try to be kind yeah. and I don't know, I think it's exciting though. I, I, I definitely agree with you. Yeah. It's extremely exciting. I, I love the fact that you're saying it's like, we got to be love, you yeah. know, that's and what it comes back down know, to at the end of the day. That's what, Always. you know, that I, I think that's the whole concept of everything on this planet yeah. is we just, we really got to love one another. And some people have a hard time with, well, I can't be around someone if they don't have the same beliefs as I do. And it's like, well, I get to have compassion for those that feel that way. Right. Absolutely. I can kind of understand that part of its conditioning, programming, how we've been taught. Um, but at the same time, would we not learn and grow as yeah. much as we have if we only listened to one person and one person only um and i mean our technology nowadays um like you and i are having this opportunity right now through zoom Mm -hmm. um and i tell people all the time and higher selves tell people this all the time if we were all traditionally normal 
our planet would not be where it's at right now. Totally. Yeah, I you agree. know, and uh, yeah. so absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, I feel like <laughs> I've taken almost an hour and a half of your time, and I want to respect <laughs> no, all of you. I've enjoyed it. Oh, it's been gosh. so yeah. fun. I do so have fun. one more question though, because I kind of feel like that was a good like wrapping up point of just like it comes back absolutely to like love but um 100%. i do have one more question um and i wrote this one down and i just said what what would you describe as one of the most significant readings you've done and like what stood out to you like what or i'm sorry no no we are we, this is my question Keep okay it <laughs> um from all that you've learned and know through your work with spirituality and communicating with the other side, what would you like all of humanity to know and maybe you kind of already answered this with love and and different mm-hmm. things but like what I don't know, like what stands out to you? What do you want people that are listening to like le- walk away after listening to the show? Like what's one of the biggest messages? I guess love might be part of it, but Absolutely. What, what do you want people to know? Like from the other side, what are they sending messages to you? Like for humanity Absolutely. to know. Absolutely. I, I, I love it because it's kind of already basically what we have been talking about, but I kind of want to put a little bit more emphasis on a couple of things there. Um, us humans, um, you know, we struggle sometimes. All of us do have anxiety. Um, I do, you know, um, there's even moments on topics that we were talking about today where I was getting anxiety, you know, um, and that's just normal. Um, and all of us humans get sad. Um, we, we sometimes feel anger. I, I struggled with anger years ago. I had to work on it for so long. And finally, I'm at that place where I don't allow anger to be part of my life. But we've been taught for too long to not feel, um, especially sadness. Um, you know, the older generation has, you know, and I, I'm not meaning to judge here, but the older generation, the old way was kind of like toughen up, mm-hmm. you know, be strong and, you know, get over it, get past it. Um, but what that did is it caused more depression. Um, when we're ignoring the feelings that we're feeling, uh, we become numb. If you ever experience talking to someone where they're a, a little bit monotone, you know, they may not recognize it. Or if you re- do recognize it as the listener where you're feeling not excited, it's like if someone gives you a gift, you you know that you should be like jumping, you know, up and down with excitement um, and you're grateful, but you're not feeling that chemical reaction. It's because these emotions are so bottled up. And so one of the things that I just wanted to let the listeners know is come back to love, Um, you know, um, have those days where you can cry. You don't have to cry in front of someone, but you can do it by yourself. The only emotion that I I have learned through higher selves to not allow into your life is rage and anger because it really doesn't solve anything. And it, it is a secondary emotion. And the primary emotion to anger is sadness. Mm-hmm. So higher selves often say, if you can cry, if you're feeling upset, then you won't get over here. Mm-hmm. And like that can out. change the world because it's the anger, it's it's violence, it's the crimes, it's that's that's anger, that's rage. Mm-hmm. So if we get rid of that and we come back to love, Feel your emotions. Don't judge it. Accept it, but don't hold on to it either. And it's the gray area. So when I when I find myself needing to heal, I cry, but I ask myself, what am I crying for? What what is it that I'm really truly sad about? And I get to go deep, and then I shift perspective. And by shifting perspective, I I challenge the human ego mind. So if I'm feeling lonely in this world, I remind myself of how many people really do love me and support me. Um, But the human ego mind will try to tell me no one cares, no one cares. But that's just the lie that the ego has created. The truth is that there's a lot of love out there. So I just want to end with, you know, you are loved and you are important and you do have a purpose. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I I agree. (laughs) I think we're meant to, you know, we were put here to feel that was part of the physical, just feel these feelings and and go through all that and experience that. And I think we've been also conditioned to think like sadness and hard times Mm -hmm. and challenges are bad, but that's actually what would make us stronger and evolve more. And yeah. And I just think right now I was listening to another podcast and they were talking about 
basically the mm-hmm. absence of love is hate and anger and yeah. fear. And so, yeah, no, we just, we have to heal this world with love. And I think it's possible. It starts within, like you said earlier. And then yeah. if we can get that to roll throughout, you know, as a collective love, that's what heals the planet. And hundred percent. that's where we are in that great awakening, right? Like if we yeah. collectively grow together, that would actually change the whole realm of this planet, which we're on our Absolutely. way, but it's going to take some time. hundred <laughs> so, yeah. percent. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. It's the ripple effect. It, you know, yeah. it changes, it changes with us. Mm-hmm. So if we make a choice, yeah. You know, I love the Michael Jackson song, Man in the Mirror. If you listen to the lyrics, it's really about look inside the mirror, yeah. look at yourself. Mm-hmm. You've got to be the one to change, yep. but it becomes a ripple effect. That's true. Because if you humans, love yourself, you can love yeah, others. Right? Yeah, right. Absolutely. Because humans do act. Um, they, they kind of, hum, humans are built in a way where if someone's heated, then the other person's going to get heated, Right. So if you hold space and for someone that's heated and raged and anger, and you're the one that is choosing love and compassion, and you get to actually show that person what that looks like, and they actually may shift in that moment. Can't promise that, but most likely that could happen. That's true. I have to throw this in really quick. I was looking at my window just for a second, and my rose plants are budding, and a little hummingbird just flew by. Oh, which <laughs> I like to think is a sign. I did a manifestation video um, on angel numbers and signs that can come up in your life, and hummingbirds are, are one of mine. And so I think I the fact it. that that just came through when you're we talking about love, I don't know. I think it's something. So I I love it. I love it. And you know, at, there's uh, so many different interpretations of so many different symbols, and that's one thing I've learned through um, you know people's loved ones is that sometimes they will use signs and symbols as yeah. a way of letting them know that they're around. Yeah. And uh, so for you, it was definitely Are you that, getting a vibe you on know, the hummingbird right now? Are you feeling anything? <laughs> <laughs> you know, as I say it, it's like, I feel grandmother energy, okay. Okay. you know, totally. Yeah. So, I remember you absolutely. did it. I was going to say really quick when we were talking earlier, when you were talking uh-huh. about heavens and then I'll let you go, you know, people can, you said sometimes people create their own heavens and you did a reading for me yeah. and you were talking about my grand grand. I think it was either great grandparent or grandparent had a garden and just to give some, again, like relevance to the woo woo for the people that are skeptics, <laughs> yeah. I went and asked my dad and he reminded me that both of his grandparents had gardens and oh, wow. just, so I'm like, okay, how did, you didn't know that. You didn't know that. Might be, how did we no, know? Yeah. You, you couldn't <laughs> Google that with my name. You wouldn't know that a great grandparent had a garden. So exactly. So right. I mean, there are just little things that come through and. I don't know. Yep. I, just, I love all that. Absolutely. Kind of stuff. And that and that's what I love about, you know, doing readings is that I purposely try to ask spirit, only give me the information that's not going to be researchable. I yeah. don't do research. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't have the time um, yeah. or the energy to or the technology to do so. But right. um I ask people's loved ones, like, please give me the information that is so simple, so small. Um, because it's the small, simple things that matter, yeah. you know, I, I was doing a, a reading for a client not too long ago and, um, her husband came through and all that she needed to hear is his voice saying, do not touch my hats. And it was for the fact that he had a shelf displayed of hats and he would always tell her and his kids do not touch the hats. See. In that moment, she broke down crying. Oh. Um, and there's no way that I would know that. Oh. And so, um, you know, uh, there is, there is evidence, you know, through that spirit is always with us through signs and symbols. Wow. So yeah. in closing, just to give people, I guess, cause that's a large thing that you do. And we kind of got off on some tangents, but you know, <laughs> it was fun though. Yeah, it was fun. I love it. But, um, just to kind of go back to what you, your profession is and mm-hmm. personal and, you know, your professional life of just being able to tap into that realm just to give people some comfort that might be curious. So you, you do with your experience, like the husband with the hats, like they are around us past loved yeah. ones and, and angels and guides are around us often or all the time. Right. And we just maybe can't right. tap into it. That might be a comfort for people that have lost someone. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And it, it goes back down to kind of like what we were talking about, you know, as well as the human ego mind, um, you know, many clients will ask like, I haven't been feeling my mom lately, you know, is she there or is she mad at me? 
And um, I, 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 I understand that us humans sometimes fear that our loved ones are disappointed in us. Um, um, but I've learned that heaven, unfortunately, uh, heaven just doesn't have those emotions. They, they don't know what judgment is. Um, is it but, because uh, there's only love? There's only love yeah, up I, in heaven. Okay. Absolutely. I've only heard that love. from somebody else too, is yeah. even though it's a higher like spiritual realm, if you will, Correct. they don't have the same emotions we have here because there's no absence of love. So they don't have anger. They don't have all the exactly. bad things that we have here because yeah. they're more advanced. But that also makes us unique here to be able to experience the opposites. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's like they can still have their own opinion, sure. but their opinion's non judgmental, if that makes uh, any sense. Yeah. You know? Um, and so where your higher self comes from is more of the idea of like what is, you know, um, your truth, you know, your opinion, your life path and your purpose. But um, but yeah, loved ones are always around us. And when we're up here in our head through the ego mind, through all the fear and chatter, we're not going to see and feel what's out here. Um, so if you do have loved ones and you've noticed that they haven't been around you lately, ask yourself where have I been at? Um, and am I pushing them away? And if I need to get back to center, then I can feel what's out here, you know? Um, and so loved ones are always there, even if we don't feel them. Wow. Very cool. So. Oh, well, Travis, thank awesome. you so much Well, this for your was time. so fun. Yeah, this was really You're... fun. We'll have to do another episode sometime. Yeah, we will definitely, <laughs> we'll absolutely. Yeah, I uh, know. <laughs> I love it. Well, I hope that people have, you know, learned something or it sparked something in their brain or, or just some yeah. reassurance. Um, but I did want to ask just where can people find more about, you know, what you do or, you know, your services? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, the best way to contact me is just going to my website, which is psychictravishill.com. Um, and uh, if, if people do have any questions about wanting to book a session, mm -hmm. um, then they can email me. Um, so on my website is the contact, mm -hmm. you know, info there. Okay. Um, and, um, and I also do have a scheduling system. Um, I, I prefer people to go online. Uh, but at the same time, I do understand that if some people are not uh, technically um, what some people call challenged, I guess <laughs> you would say, you know, yeah. um, I had many clients say, I don't know how to use your scheduling system. And I'm, I'm totally fine with helping people out. Um, so I can call you okay. um, and, and, and schedule you. Um, and then those uh, that are skeptical, um, if you're fearful about putting in your information, such as your name. Um, clients have done it in the past of just making it up. Um, and I'm totally fine with that and it still works. <laughs> that's, actually a better that's a better test, right? Because then you can't Google them. Yeah, absolutely. But I also want to add to, uh, uh, this real fast. Um, when you go to a medium, any medium or any psychic, um, skepticism is extremely normal. Even me, I'm skeptic on certain things. But you got to allow that person in energetically and um, don't be closed off. I, I usually close my eyes when I'm channeling, so I don't read body language, but I can feel when a client's not allowing me in. So the best practices before booking a session with any psychic or medium is to first um, clear your mind, um, pray to your loved ones that you want to connect to, pray to your higher self of the guidance that you want. And just really have faith and belief that it's going to work out. You're the best person that's going to know in that moment if that psychic is legit or not by the vibration that you're feeling from that person. Yeah. So just make sure that you are open. Um, otherwise, your experience could be a little bit, you know, negative if you're not allowing someone in. If that's that makes that's sense. true. That's good advice. Yeah. And I mean, what do you have to lose? You might as well open up and just see if what. Kind of <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Totally. You know, and. For, for me, I, it's like there are people that I have a hard time reading and I do have, you know, off days sometimes. There there was a day recently, a couple of days ago, um, where I, I was having all really good sessions and then there was just that one client. Um, luckily, she, you know, emailed me and said, hey, Travis, it just really didn't make sense. Um, I said, I am so sorry. I could have had an off day. Maybe just our energies weren't connecting. I'll just go ahead and send you a refund. Yeah. So it's important that integrity is in place when it comes to any spiritual practitioner, because we are working with energy yeah. and energy is very tricky. That's true. And it can also change too. Like I talked about uh, in 
a past episode that I had three mm-hmm. different people say that I was going to have a boy when I was pregnant, and you were one of them or- originally. Oh, was that? Remember? Remember? <laughs> How no. funny! And then I don't remember. I had a miscarriage. I think we emailed you this later. I had a miscarriage, uh-huh. and then I had a reading with you on Valentine's Day. It wasn't this one, but the one before. And then you okay. said you were seeing a girl, and I was so confused because I had had three different psychics tell me boy. I had had a dream uh-huh. about a boy. I had all these signs coming through about a boy. I had a miscarriage. And then I think either a different soul or the soul changed its mind. This is, again, another – you go down a rabbit hole. But yeah. I think the soul wanted to change the gender perhaps. But you told me I was having a girl. And then I found out I was pregnant a couple weeks later and ended up <laughs> being a girl. So you got a vibe on that though. So to give That you, is so awesome. Give that is so awesome. Credit to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so yeah. much for that validation, yeah. by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because – I I tell people all the time, it's like, I'm receiving information. I'm giving it to a client. And, um, you know, I have, I always ask every client, like, I hope that you enjoy today's session. Um, I can sometimes hear through people's tones that maybe they didn't, I hear other people saying that they just absolutely loved it. Um, so as a medium, you just don't know how good you're doing and the feedback is important. And yeah. so thank you for yeah. that because and I mean, that, things can change too, right? Like it could have been um, that there was, it was supposed to be a boy and then it changed to a girl. Like that's the thing is you might say thing and it's true today, but then things can, can change in the energy world. It can. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's always things that are changing in our life. You know, it's, it's, it's extremely hard to predict the future because there's free will that plays a huge mm-hmm. part into that. Um, And children predicting genders is even just as harder because um, you are right. The spirit can change its gender before it becomes. Perhaps have a different experience here through a different gender, right? right? That's what I've heard. Absolutely. 100%. Wow. That's cool. Uh, Travis, (laughs) thank you so much. Awesome. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you. um, For the the listeners, I'm going to put in the notes of the YouTube – I didn't even know this existed, by the way. So if you're watching this, you don't know. In the description of the video, if you click expand and more, you can put notes. So I'm going to put your website in the notes so people can find you. Okay. And then That's perfect. as well on the podcast, Apple, Spotify, there is a description area and I will write your website. So if you've listened to it okay. and you forget it, just go to the description of where, whatever platform you're listening to and I will have Travis's website if you guys are all interested in having a reading. I think you should do it. It was super, I've done two. I plan to do another one with you. I, I love them. Um, so if anyone is curious and getting in touch with their higher self or wants to see if a loved one or a past relative, or you just want to like learn something new and you're curious, Travis is really great. And I've had some, <laughs> some legit stuff come through with you knowing things that you would have never known. So just again, to give it some validity, um, if you're curious about this, Check out Travis and, and book an appointment. It, it's a really neat experience. <laughs> Thank you yeah, so much. <laughs> totally. Well, thanks for spending the afternoon with me. And I hope that everyone enjoyed this. And um, again, as always, you can find me on Instagram at Real Lauren Live. And then also my website, Lauren.live. Um, and then all the platforms are up there and you can find this episode uh, on there. So we hope you love it. Share it with friends, family. If you have anyone that's interested in the spiritual world and all the cool, crazy stuff we talked about today, feel free to share. So thank you again, Travis, for uh, your time today. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, for sure. Take care. (laughs) (laughs) Bye. Bye.